All right, here we are at 1.4. It's our last lesson, and it's a bit of a change of a topic. Now we're talking about the inverse of a, a relation. So up until now, we've been talking about functions. So this first part, all this text here, is about the difference between uh, a relation and a function. So for a uh, relation, in mathematics, it is the connection between the x and the y variables. One single x value may have multiple y values. So now this is true just for the relation. Okay, so for example, if we arrange our x and our y in the form of ordered pairs, so we could define a relation by all the ordered pairs. And we could have, say, a 2 comma 3, and we could have another ordered pair of, say, 2 comma 4. So the same x value can be uh, related, can be connected to more than one different y values. Okay. Another way of talking about a relation is that it does not have to pass, does not have to pass the vertical line test. Okay, so now a function is a type of relation. Okay, so if we're talking about here is the set of all definitions of things that are relations. Inside of that would be the set of functions. So all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. A particular relation uh, where each element, oh, I'm going to try to erase this, where each element uh, has one and only one unique element in the range y. So it does have, have to pass the vertical line test. Okay, um, so how do functions work again? Uh, I think that gives you a good idea of how, of, of the reason for this. Um, here, I'll do a little space over here. If I call a function, I'm going to give it the letter f. So this is function f, just like we often say f of x, right? But we can say g of x, okay? So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this function f. Uh, it, it does something with the inputs. So say, let's say if I plug in a 2, and let's say what the function does is say, oh, I'm going to add 1 to it. What comes out is a3, okay? So all the different things that can go into that into that is the domain. And all the different values that come out are the range. Okay, uh, the, there are some numbers that perhaps some functions will not accept, right? So if the function is, uh, you know, um, divide, you know, take some number and divide it by what you input, then you would not be allowed to input a zero. Or if, say, this was take the square root, it would not allow a negative value. So sometimes the domain has restrictions, and sometimes, the due to the nature of this, the range will also have some restrictions, okay? So we're going to have a 2 comma 3. Okay, so why does it have to have, have to pass the vertical line test? Well, the vertical line test is all about whether or not the same x value could have two different y values. If I plug in a 2, there's all, the function is going to do something to it. There's only one answer for it, okay? So um, here, 2 comma 3 and 2 comma 4, if I was to graph that, 2 comma 3 would be here and 2 comma 4 would be there. That would create a vertical line. Okay, if we it would not pass the vertical line test, uh, plugging in the same value two is giving us two different values for three. So that is not acting like a function. So thinking of a function as uh, as a machine that does something with an input and, and creates an output. Okay, so uh, here's an example of a relation which is not a function. Uh, I'll pick an example that we'll be using later on in this lesson. So kind of a sideways parabola. Would that pass the vertical line test? No, right? Because any of these places, if I put a vertical line, I could pass, I could touch two places, and that does not pass the vertical line test. But if I drew it more like this, there we go. So this is a relation but not a function. This is a relation and a function because regardless of where I draw a vertical line, it will only hit that function at one place. All right, so the inverse of a function is found when the x and the y values are changed. So here is the definition of the inverse. Okay, so using mapping notation, if you're given x, y, so if this is the parent, right, this is the image. So if I say find the inverse of this function, you can just switch all the x and y's. So for this one here, what would the inverse look like? Okay, so the curly braces 
are means we're defining a set, and inside the set are these ordered pairs. All we're going to do is we're going to switch the x and the y each time. Okay, so um, pretty straightforward. Uh, are the two relations above functions? Okay, so let's look at the first one. Are there, is there any situation where I have the same x value uh, with different y values? No. So it does pass. So th this is this is a relation and this is also a function. Yes. How about this one? All the different x values, all the x values are different, so this is also a function. So are the two relations above functions? Yes. Uh, you, we could say they pass the, how about the VL test, the vertical line test? Or another way to say the same thing is uh, each x value is connected to only one y value. So you don't get a situation where, say, we have 2, 2 and then 2, 3, where one x value is associated with two different y values. If you had something like this, it would not be a function, right? Maybe I'll take it, put a stroke through that. Don't want to confuse anyone. Okay, so here it says, given the relation below, sketch its inverse on the same graph. Okay, so these kind of look blue to my mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, here is my original, and then the image is going to be inverse. Okay, so let's take a little moment to figure out our one, two, three, four points. So we've got, uh, what would that be, negative 2, comma, 0 and that would turn into 0 comma negative 2. So let's go put that somewhere. 0 comma negative 2 would be... Wait, sorry, no, it was not negative 2 comma 0, it was negative 2 comma 1. Let's fix that. There we go. Did not look right. So negative 2 comma 1 is going to be equal to 1 comma negative 2. So 1 comma negative 2 is over here, okay? Uh, and you see how it reflects, we're going to get into that in a second. The next one would be negative 1, comma 2, and that turns into 2, comma, negative 1, all right? 2, comma, negative 1 over here. So you see where that goes. Our next uh, spot is 1, comma, 2, and that will get mapped onto 2, comma, positive 1. So 2, comma, positive 1 is over here. You can kind of see this shape sort of coming together. Our last point is at 2, comma, 0, and that will get mapped onto 0, comma, 2. So 0, comma, 2 would be up there. So here are our points, and now I'm going to connect them together as best as I can. And here we go. Wait, one, two, three, and here's our fourth one. Was like that. Okay. Done. Now the original graph is a function because it would pass the vertical line test, regardless of where I would put a vertical line. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if I can make a vertical line here. So here's a vertical line, and if I you know move it around, can I do that? Not sure if I can or not here. Let's just try some out here. There we go. So regardless of where I move it around, except for my thing scrolling, uh, yeah, a little bit difficult. But my green one, my inverse function, would not pass the vertical line test. Like right there, uh, it would not pass it. Okay, so yeah, let me delete that thing. So in this range right here, it would not pass the vertical line test. So the inverse is not a function. Okay. It is possible to determine whether or not the inverse of a relation is a function without having to physically graph it. This can be done by using the, well, let's just think about this. The, the original function, uh, it would have to pass a horizontal line test, right? So you'll notice that this zone here where Okay, it's sort of like this zone here. This is all the areas where a vertical line test would not work. This is where a horizontal line test wouldn't 
pass on the original function. So it is possible to determine whether or not the inverse of a relation is a function without having to physically graph it. This can be done by using the horizontal line test. Okay. The graphs of a relation and its inverse have symmetry over the line. Now you may have noticed this already. So it's not a symmetry it's not a reflection over the x-axis, that would look different, and it's not a reflection over the y-axis. It's actually a reflection over the y is equal to x-axis. So the y is equal to x is where like negative 3 and negative 3, negative 2 and negative 2, it's this line here. This is what y is equal to x would look like. So if I draw a dashed line along here, now it's a little bit hard to to understand because you know it's on both sides but this point when it's reflected across this uh, y equals x axis lands over there this blue point lands over on this green point this blue point lands over there and this blue point lands over there okay um, so it's interesting where a vertical line on the uh, image comes from a horizontal line okay so that's kind of a neat idea so let me just graph over here for a second if I have a, uh, a vertical line here when I reflect it it turns into a vertical line okay because uh, here's the reflection this point goes here that point goes there and this point goes there it's kind of neat the way that works the lines the graphs of a relation and its inverse have a symmetry over the line y is equal to x. Okay, so state the domain and the range of the relation and its inverse. So this is of the one that we just did. Okay, so remember the domain is all the x values and the range is all the y values. Okay, so the x values uh, of the original function is negative 2, negative 1, 1 and 2. So the domain would be negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. So there is the domain, this all these values, okay? So actually the best way I could write this would be, here let's state it in interval notation. It's as small as, it goes from negative 2, trying to erase there, from negative 2 up to positive 2, and it touches both of them. So if that is the domain, all the possible x values of my original function, because we just switched the x and the y, that's going to be the same thing as the, the, the range of my new function, right? So now this is, this is my domain, and this is my range. So what happened is this negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2, they're now in my range. So this gets copied over here. And if we look at our function, we can see in the green values, right, the green values, the smallest it gets is negative 2, and the highest it gets is positive 2, right? So the x domain of my original function is equal to the range of my inverse function. Okay, so now we've got to look at the other values for the y of my original. Uh, the smallest is 0, the greatest is 1. Uh, or looking at it here, the smallest is 0 and the greatest, oh sorry, is, is 2. It goes from 0 to 2. So I would say over here, I'll switch to, to uh, I don't know, red. Between 0 and 2 and it touches the 0 and it touches the 2. So my range over here is exactly the same. So you see how the domain and the range switch because we're switching the x and the y values. All right. When the inverse is a function, we use the following notation. So this is, if this is the original function, this is the inverse function. Okay. Now you got to be a little bit careful. So, uh, you know, it's easy to mix this up. F to the power of negative one. It's not a power to the negative one. Like I know that x to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 over x. So there is some logical sense to think that this is the way it works. But try to get this one out of your head. I'm going to just put like a no, don't think of, of it that way. But how about, think of it as, um, the remember the inverse sine. How do we do inverse sine? Sine of negative 1, right, is inverse. 
So sort of think of it like that. Inverse, so for example, uh, the inverse sine of 0 0.5 right? Uh, so what we do is for inverse sign, we are switching the x and the y. So we use, if you see, your calculator probably looks like that, or sometimes you're used to writing it out that way. This means inverse of a function, okay? So here's an example. If the graph of f of x contains the point 3 comma negative 4, determine a point that must be on f inverse of x. So, well, how do you do that? You just switch the x and the y. So it's negative 4, comma 3. We really didn't need to have all this white space because that's the answer. How about in the next example? If f of x is equal to 3x minus 1, determine the equation that represents y is equal to the inverse of f of x. Okay, well, this one takes a little bit more of an effort. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll re-type re, uh, out the original function. Uh, now I want to change this f of x to y because I'm going to be switching my x and a y in a second. So I'm going to change this to y is equal to 3x minus 1. Okay, now it's time to change to the inverse. So uh, I'm going to change colors just to donate that this was my regular function. Now I'm changing it to x is equal to 3y minus 1. So this is now the inverse. But this is not the form that we want, okay? The form that we want at the end is um, we want f inverse of x, okay? So I'm going to have to solve for y. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And now I'll divide both sides by 3. And I'll rewrite it here. I get y is equal to x plus 1 over 3, all over 3. And it's, it's okay to do that. And for our last step, we're going to say f inverse of x is equal to x plus 1 over 3. And I really uh, recommend you doing this last step of putting f inverse of x because they're asked us to find what is the equation that represents that. So again, we switch it to y switch x and y and that's when we, it's now the inverse function and then work at getting it in the right form and putting it back to f inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 3. Alright, there is some homework for you. I will see you in class.